What's up, all my lovely faces of the internet? It's your boy, the Hobby Collector, here to give you guys a look at my editing laptop I'll be using for 2022 and going forward. I already showed you guys, or gave you guys a glimpse and a sneak peek at the camera I'll be using, which is the Blackmagic 6K Pro. But now it's time to show you guys the editing computer I'll be using for that big bad bowl. Because you already know you're going to need some horsepower to, you know what I'm saying, to run those files. So, so I decided to go with the M1, one of the M1 MacBook Pros, 13-inch. Uh, that came out in 2022. Now I know a lot of you that's watching, especially some of you that have been watching me for a long time are gonna be saying and wondering why I didn't go out, go with one of the ones that came out 2021, uh, whether it be the 16 inch or the 14 inch. So I went with this laptop, like I said, because you know, the price I got it at, actually I got it for under a thousand dollars. I did get it refurbished, but under a thousand dollars and for it to be a laptop that can really handle some 4k 4k editing and also run circles around some some other machines that cost around three thousand dollars and stuff like that even five thousand even um it's just ridiculous and when i first rendered my first uh i think it was like a 15 minute 15 minutes 15 minute uh pro res it was only 1080p it was a 4k but uh it rendered like in uh I think it was like 15 seconds, 15 to 30 to 30 seconds, a 15 minute video, 15 to 30 seconds. Like that blew my damn mind. My 15 inch retina display, that would have took about, about seven minutes because that laptop does render stuff pretty fast. But seven minutes is still fast for a 15 minute video, but for it to render in seconds and not even a minute, come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. The only thing I will say that I was kind of like off put by getting this laptop is the size, you know, because I did move up from the 13 inch to the 15 inch retina and 15 inch is like the perfect size for me. Sooner or later, I end up getting like the 14 inch or the 16 inch. For some reason, the 16 inch haven't been getting that that many good reviews. You know, I've been getting like around three stars and four stars for some reason. Um, a lot of people ain't really liking the 16 inch, but uh, that will be the laptop I'll be upgrading to next. Um, so probably in, at the end of 2022 or at the beginning of 2023 for sure but for now this laptop does do a very good job I already rendered and edited some 4k video I already did uh youtube videos and all kind of stuff um and it does a good job even when it comes to game capture i was using my other laptop the retina display for my game capture uh you know recordings and i was doing some recording some of the new halo doing one of my halo sessions and i was getting a lot of lag like that was my first time actually experiencing some lag i guess that because it's a uh it's a game that requires more, um, you know, graphical power. But when I used the M1 MacBook Pro, you know, um, it blew me away. Like I was getting pretty much no lag whatsoever, maybe a tiny bit, a super, super tiny bit, but that was just it, you know what I'm saying? Like other than that, it was running real smooth and I was just happy, man. This laptop does a good job when it comes to, uh, you know, taking care of heavy tasks and editing and moving multiple clips and stuff like that especially since my workflow is still consistent of 1080p content like it, it kicks 1080p footage ass like i can do all kind of movements and just everything if i was able to do stuff with my other macbook real well without that many hiccups for the most part of course the m1 is gonna kick ass the other reason why i decided to go with this macbook pro is because i never had a chance to get any other macbook pros that got the touch bar i know the touch bar is kind of controversial which i don't see why it gives you so many different options when it comes to different uh, apps that you open, uh, Apple-based apps and, and just usability and stuff. It's just a lot of thoughtful uh, things that they put into that touch bar. It's a high-res high display. It's not all cheesy and, and looking all cheesy and finicky. It's actually a real good high-res display. The newer MacBooks, they got rid of the touch bar. And I think I, I honestly think I would have actually opted to go with the newest MacBooks if they had the touch bar. I wouldn't went ahead and paid an extra thousand dollars. You know, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get one of these anyway, so I might as well go ahead and get it now. And it got the touch bar too that I always wanted. So let me go ahead and get one of the newer ones. But since they don't, that's also what made me go back and got and get this one. It comes with a new chip, the M1 M1 chip and the touch bar. So it's like, I'm glad I waited for the touch bar MacBook because now I get one with the new chip and it has a touch bar. I just wish that it was a bigger MacBook, which they do have a bigger one, but it doesn't have the, uh, the M1 chip. I think it's a 16 inch um, retina display MacBook with a touch bar, but it do not have the new M1 chip. And it costs the same amount as the one with the new M1 chip. So it, it wouldn't make no sense for me to buy that MacBook. Even though someone inside their YouTube video actually did that. They said they'd rather have that MacBook than the newer MacBook with the M1 chip because even when editing 4K footage, they're not having that much issues whatsoever. But yeah, 15-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip with the touch bar is like my dream MacBook right there. Like, 
I would love that. You can even swap stuff out, uh, put stuff on the touch bar that you want and take stuff off that you don't want. You can easily show people how to edit for the first time using the touch bar by showing them their timeline and where they're at on the timeline. Just little stuff like that. This is like the little things that make a big difference. Don't always expect, people always look at the biggest gift under the tree and expect that, expect that to be the biggest thing when sometimes the littlest gift is the most spectacular thing. And then one thing, another thing I forgot to mention, it almost made me want to get the newer MacBook Pros, the 2021 edition, is that they bring back all the ports. And the reason that kind of put me off from buying the MacBooks that came out when they did eliminate the ports is that they eliminated the ports. But here's the thing. At the time, most of my uh, video editing consisted of 1080p content coming off a memory card. So I needed all those extra ports uh, the USB port and stuff like that for the external hard drive and you know the memory card slot to easily plug my card in and edit from the card or transfer files that super easily without using a dongle and stuff like that. So that was the whole reason of me getting a retina display MacBook and loving the older MacBooks versus the newer ones and stuff like that even though I did love the touch bar. Now here's the thing, my newer editing setup is going to be done of course using mostly 4K footage editing directly onto a SSD, T5 SSD. Now, what type of cable dongle does a T5 SSD use? Exactly. And then ask yourself this, what ports do the older MacBook Pros, including the one that I have, what ports do those MacBook Pros have? So with that being said, now my editing setup is gonna be pretty much consistent of only needing to use that because I'll be editing directly off the hard drive. Now I will not no longer be using memory cards at all for the most part, and I'll be using T5 SSD. So don't need those extra ports anymore. But even if I did need it, as you see from the footage, I brought me a dongle that have those extra ports, the uh, HDMI, USB 3.0 ports and stuff like that, things of that nature, including the USB type C ports as well that I need. So with that being said, that's going to do my, that's going to, that's going to do my, that's going to be my um, review. Not really review. It wasn't really, really a review. It was pretty much giving you guys a look at my editing setup going towards 2022 to let you guys know I'm not playing when it comes to next year. So if you subscribe to your boy, go ahead and say stay tuned. I got some stuff coming, some heat coming for y'all, some eye candy and everything. And if you haven't been, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and you already know what to do. So one of the next videos will be my new camera. So be looking out for that. Um, also, I'll be doing a, a year review of having a PS5 and also a, a year review of having uh, my 4K OLED. I think I had it for a year already, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you guys for watching it and I'm out. Peace.